it's my immense pleasure to be introducing the launch of Catalytic Clothing here this morning. Many of you uh, may be already familiar with the work of Professor Tony Ryan at the University of Sheffield and Professor Helen Story from here at London College of Fashion. Those of you who aren't, they have been working together for over six years in unprecedented ways. Collaboratively, their work has already touched millions of people around the world and Catalytic Clothing is no less ambitious. Across the UK, poor air quality results in about 29,000 deaths every year due to breathing in these fine particles, which we can't see, and that's why most people don't know about air pollution. The average loss of life of those individuals is 11.5 years. So if you put this into context against alcoholism, <coughs> side stream tobacco smoke, and even road accidents, it absolutely dwarfs those other public health challenges. We can use clothing to support catalysts to purify the air. Because I knew about the architectural coatings that we used on glass and buildings that use nanoparticles of titania. So then we were searching for how can we apply nanoparticles of titania to clothing. Uh, and we found uh, some colleagues in Crystal Global who made such particles there. They're here with us in the room today. Um, and we realized that actually on fabric, these particles are really, really efficient because of the high surface area of the fibre combined with the high surface area of the particle. One of the challenges of this project is given that some of these world challenges have become important to all of us, how fashion can serve some of those challenges and come up with some of those solutions hand in hand with science. So what we're trying to do here in a way is to speed up science and slow down fashion um, so that we can do experiments and involve the public in this very early conversation about a technology that's yet to come. So Ecofair, uh, they want to improve people's daily life by offering sustainable solutions. And, and by doing so, uh, we also think we can contribute to social change um, and, and then contribute to a sustainable future for everybody. That's what we believe in. And I think this project uh, fits uh, in this vision also very well, this social change. I am Simon Evans from the magazine called Energy Books. Um, I guess this is probably a question for Tony. Um, I just wanted to get a sense of, I think on your website there's something about how many people would need to wear these clothing, this clothing to make a difference. Uh, if, if, a person's, if a person's clothing is, let's say it's 10 square metres, right? so there's 25 square metres, let's say 10 square metres of a person's clothing, the fibres would be active because they'd be seeing light. Half of them are dark, it's not going inside half of the light. So, for example, in my city, Sheffield, right, there's, there's 8,000 tons of, uh, of NOx in the, in the environment every year. In order to be compliant, we'd need to take out 1,000 tons a year, which is 3 tons a day. Okay? So you need to take out 3 tons of NOx a day. So in order to do that, you'd need 6 million square metres, okay? which is 600,000 people. Okay? So half the population of Sheffield uh, would, take, would, would make Sheffield compliant. How exactly is the technology applied to the fabric or the fibers? Uh, in, in, for the fields of jeans um, and for the experimental work we've done, it's applied as a spray. And it's a sol uh, provided by uh, Crystal Global that's uh, a, a solution of the particles and it's literally sprayed off. Invisible. I think people have to um, have some understanding and just have a, a bit of an act of faith. But I think that um, I think it's got huge potential for something to be a small action by individuals to really just have a, a massive ripple effect. And it's really exciting to see somebody something that's bringing together, you know, uh, science and art to solve some of the grand challenges that, that we have in society today. I think this can become massive and that's of course the idea because the more people you get uh, to step into the idea, the more result we will get in the end, the more cleaner the air will be. So we need at least 10% of the population really in big cities to apply the technology to be able to have a good effect on, on the air quality. This potential project could be one of the solutions to a major public health challenge that we have now. It's uh, one of the ways in which we can deal with one of the pollutants which is really giving us uh, big 
uh, problem and help with that stage and go outside. Um, it's created already very unprecedented ways of working um, but what they are very aware of and I think we've become aware of is the fact that it, it takes the engagement of everybody else to really take it to take it outward so judging by the, the reaction so far I think the potential is pretty amazing. Well, from my perspective as a scientist uh, fashion allows me to talk to people who I wouldn't otherwise get to talk to and introduce some of the some of the issues um, from, from the fashion perspective, there are lots of things that science can contribute, you know, all sorts of techie things. Um, but also in sustainability, uh, because, you know, the, the fashion industry um, is almost the pinnacle of our consumer society. You know, it is intensely consumerist, and we need to relearn how to be consumers, and science can help there. So, I was really pleased with the turnout, and really pleased with the type of people that came. I hope what they got from it was a sense that there are human beings behind this project. It's not some great university or corporate or invisible sized sort of um, endeavour. Uh, that they stay in contact with the project um, and that they begin to help us build a demand for the technology. Um, if the public actually said we want this, that would actually speed things ahead really, really fast. So we want them to work as hard as we are but in a completely different way.